This is EWA Radio, and I'm public editor Emily Richmond. In a first-of-its-kind survey, Education Week asked school police officers for their take on the state of readiness of the nation's public K-12 campuses. Their responses add an important dimension to current conversations about how to improve campus safety. Joining us to talk about this is Evie Blad. She's a reporter with Education Week. Evie, welcome back to EWA Radio. Thank you. And Holly Yedick, Director of Education Week's Research Center, joins us as well. Holly, welcome back to you. Thank you so much, Emily. I'm glad to be here. Holly, I do want to start with you. Why was now the time for Education Week to undertake this survey? Well, we've been thinking about it for some time, but really the Parkland shootings gave us a sense of urgency about it. We knew from some reporting and data analysis that we did last year that there really isn't a lot known about school resource officers. The federal data is not very specific in terms of who they are. We couldn't even obtain basic information about their demographics. And so we really wanted to just learn more about this group. And I do think that's really important because we talk about them in sort of this general way. We use interchangeably words like school police officer, school resource officer, safety officer. And they're really not all the same thing. And they're not the same training or background or even job description. So tell us a little bit about what you know about the more than 400 individuals who responded to the survey. In terms of who responded to the survey, we did ask people whether or not they consider themselves to be school resource officers. So these would be people who were really police in schools as opposed to a security guard who's not trained as a member of law enforcement. We excluded people who did not consider themselves school resource officers. Among those who did take the survey, we found that the average officer is a 48-year-old white male who has worked in law enforcement for 19 years and has been a school police officer for nine years. He works for a local police or sheriff's department, most likely, rather than a school police department. And he does have experience working with youth prior to becoming a school resource officer. Most officers are assigned to a single school, and they view their primary roles as enforcing laws. Most school resource officers did tell us that they felt they had sufficient training in working in schools, and the most common training they had received was related to responding to active shooters. Evie, let's start with this figure. One in five officers said their school wasn't prepared to handle an active shooter situation. That number might surprise some people, but it didn't surprise the experts when you talked to them about it, did it? I think that that figure is kind of a mirror. You know, it kind of reflects back to you what you might already think. Uh, We've had some people say, wow, it's great that four out of five do feel ready. And some people say, Man, those four out of five are overconfident. How can any school be ready? It's important to note that the question is not whether the police officer feels prepared. It's about whether they feel their school is prepared. And that sort of gets at the idea that just putting an officer in a school isn't enough to make it safe, which is something that experts would say, that you have to have comprehensive plans. And, you know, a lot of human factors, like whether or not students respect that certain doors are supposed to be locked and whether or not students have been drilled in where to go in the event that they have to evacuate the school. All of those things matter. It's not just a matter of putting personnel in place. There's been a lot of debate recently over whether arming teachers, something President Trump has advocated, is a good idea. And about a third of the officers who responded agreed that training and arming a select group of teachers would, quote, make their school safer. I did think it was interesting and noteworthy that there were some differences in opinion on whether arming teachers is a good idea based on the respondents' race, and Black officers were less likely than their non-Black peers to perceive that that would make their school safer. Talk to us a little bit about that. You know, there are concerns that students from different demographic groups have different experiences with police in general and that they might perceive an armed teacher, an armed officer differently depending on their race, depending on their experience with police outside of school. We talk about adding school police officers. Uh, Usually policymakers bring them up at times like this when we're responding to something like a shooting. But the truth is that School police spend a lot more time interacting with students, and many of them will never encounter a situation like this on a job. So while it's important that they are read into school safety plans and that they've trained for active shooting situations, it's also important that they're prepared for the regular interactions with students. And, you know, some civil rights groups have raised an alarm because they fear that police will be put in schools without adequate training to work with students. 
Is some of what you're finding here really a chance for us to have a conversation or or prompt some reporting on what the expectations are of this job? I mean, we talk about what they've been trained to do. There also seems to be some disparity in what those expectations are for when they're supposed to intervene in a student altercation, for example, or what their role is to discipline a child. You know, and I'd also just want to know what the expectations are for their day-to-day life. I would encourage reporters whose states or districts are talking about adding more school police to ask a couple of questions. The first thing I would ask is, does your state have minimum training requirements for a school officer that go beyond what a normal law enforcement officer would be required to do? So are they required to learn how to work with children or can they come right off of a street beat and go right into a school? And then does your state school or district go above and beyond those requirements? What kind of specific training do they have? You know, officers told us almost half of them said that they hadn't had training to work with special education students. And we know that that's a major concern for civil rights groups. You know, I do want to point out and emphasize what you said, that statistically speaking, schools are still the safest place for most children to be during the day, and campus shootings themselves are rare. That being said, there have been several incidents in the past year when having an armed officer on site either did or even didn't deter an attack. Do you think that's more about circumstances than training? I think the idea of officers or even armed teachers as deterrence is likely anecdotal at this point. You know, some school safety experts have said that the idea that a school shooter might pick a different target is less likely than in other mass shootings because school shooters are likely going to their own schools. We have reason to believe that the Parkland shooter must have known that there was an on-campus deputy in Parkland, but he went anyway. Now, he didn't know how that deputy was going to respond, but it didn't deter him. So the question is, are officers there to deter school shooters or are they there to mitigate the effects if a shooting does happen? A majority of officers we surveyed said that they believe they serve both purposes. Holly, the survey also asked school police officers how they feel about the work they're doing now. Tell us a little bit about where their morale is at. Well, morale in the job in general was pretty strong. Most SROs, 58% said that morale is excellent or very good, and just 3% said that morale was poor. One sort of interesting wrinkle is that female officers had slightly poorer morale than male officers. So for instance, 27% of male officers reported that morale was excellent as compared to 14% of female officers. We also found that younger officers had slightly poorer morale. That's really interesting. Um, Evie, how does the survey inform some of the conversations that are happening right now on Capitol Hill with Betsy DeVos's School Safety Commission, where she's fielding a lot of advice from different special interest groups about how they think campuses should be improved? There are some folks who are just very focused on the acute, immediate situation of what would happen in the event of a shooting. And then there are folks who are focused on sort of the pipeline of issues that can relate to students' mental health, their sense of social isolation, and that sort of thing. And those two ideas can fit together, or they can sometimes feel sort of at odds with each other. There are folks who say this whole notion of hardening schools, of just putting as many armed adults in place as possible and beefing up school security hardware is not enough. You have to account for human factors. There are folks who say that supportive relationships between students and adults and among students are some of the most important things you can have in place in school to ensure that students don't get to the point where they will harm themselves or others. We're talking with Evie Blad and Holly Yedick of Education Week about a new survey of school police officers. Don't miss an episode of EWA Radio. You never have to. You can find us on your favorite podcast app. And don't forget to take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Your support and feedback will help us grow. Holly, you did ask your survey respondents for some input, which might be of interest to Betsy DeVos's commission, and that was what would they think schools could do to prevent an active shooter situation? What did they say? Well, you know, what was interesting is that their number one response was that they thought that um, schools should improve student and staff training on school security and awareness of threats. Number two was securing the school building and increasing physical security measures. But I thought it was interesting that their top answer had to do with improving student and staff training as opposed to hiring more school police officers, adding metal detectors, that kind of thing. 
I did think it was interesting in their answer some of the things they've already said they're doing, things like limiting entrances used during school hours. And, and anyone who's visited a school these days, particularly high school, has probably had that airlock experience where you go in one entry and then have to get buzzed in again. But the thing that I thought was sort of tragic was this idea of external numbers on doors and windows to quickly communicate locations with first responders. And that struck me as a little sad. Yeah, that was from an officer in Missouri who seemed to be very concerned about coordinating with outside law enforcement when they got to the scene. And that has been a big conversation since Parkland because we've seen some holes and some potential fumbles in how local law enforcement responded to the shooting. There's been a lot of criticism of that. And so, you know, whether it's something as deliberate and direct as marking doors and windows, there are a lot of officers who would tell you coordination with the folks who would be responding in that worst case scenario is an important thing. Is there something you hope people don't do with this data? So one thing that you can't do with this data is compare SROs in one state versus another. It's just a national survey versus a state by state survey. So I wouldn't want people to necessarily think that everything is uniform all the way across the country. It's important to remember that this is a national average. And there are some great ways, though, I think that education reporters could look at these numbers as story starters. What is some advice you have there? One thing I thought was really interesting is when you looked at the percentage of SROs who felt that their schools were prepared to handle an active shooter, the percentages were quite a bit lower in urban school districts. So it was only 66 percent felt their schools were prepared in urban school districts. And so I would be interested in looking at the difference in in SROs, you know, in their perceptions and the way in which they work in urban versus suburban rural districts. You know, we also found that urban districts were more likely to have their own police departments than were other types of districts. So I think that could be sort of a fruitful area of investigation. Evie, you've covered campus safety for a long time. Was there anything in here that surprised you? Yeah, I think that how low the percentage of officers are who had special training to work with special education students feels like a really notable thing to me because it's an issue that's constantly flagged by parent and civil rights groups. And because there are federal laws that protect special education students, they can't be disciplined for behavior that's a manifestation of their diagnosis. And so the idea that there are school police officers who, while they say they stay out of school discipline, sometimes the line's a little blurry if a kid is acting up in the hallway or or something like that. If there's an officer who doesn't know how an IEP works or doesn't know what a behavioral response to trauma or to, you know, certain situations looks like, that could be problematic. And so I would want to know, if I were covering a local district, what kind of training my officers receive to work with students with special education concerns. I think what comes through here is that we're asking a lot of these individuals. I mean, we're asking them to provide both public safety and be prepared to deal with a lot of the classroom or behavior management problems that spill out into the hallways and to have an understanding of how kids' brains work. That's a heavy lift. Right. And the National Association of School Resource Officers and a lot of other groups say school police should not be involved in discipline that should be handled by school administrators. They should only be involved in disciplining children for things that you would call an officer on campus for if you didn't already have one, because we don't want to have overly punitive discipline for students. So some civil rights groups have said, yeah, let's treat these folks like armed guards. Let's put them on the perimeter of our schools and not in the hallways because they think it's problematic to have officers interacting with students on a daily basis. But some groups like NASRO say that those effects can be canceled out and officers can serve a good purpose if they are trained to mentor students, trained to work in the classroom and things like that. But it is a very unique form of law enforcement. And every officer I talked to said, We don't want to be seen as just another armed person in the school and that we need to be integrated into a school's practices. If you want it to feel safer, we need to be a part of the planning process for safety and we need to be prepared for the unique task of working with students. Holly, this survey could be seen as a companion piece to some really terrific reporting done last year by Education Week on campus discipline and safety. What's next in the pipeline? What should we be looking for? Well, you know, maybe down the road, we'll do another survey of school resource officers and see if things have changed, you know, with all the attention that has been given lately to school shootings and school safety. um, You know, it'll be interesting to see if anything changes. 
I would be interested to see, and the two numbers I would want to be watching would be the morale to see if changing job descriptions or expectations or even just the public pressure they're feeling might shift that number. And also if they feel better resourced. Um, A number of them said they didn't feel they had enough resources at their schools to adequately prepare. And certainly, Evie, you've written about some federal funding that could be coming down the pipeline. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how schools and districts use school safety funding, whether they use it for these more hard measures, if they use it for things like training and threat assessment and things like that. The conversation about school discipline and safety has changed so significantly since the Obama administration. There's talk of rescinding federal guidance on school discipline that among other things, said that schools could be flagged for disciplining students of certain races at higher rates than their peers. And it also said that schools are responsible for ensuring that officers in their hallways respect the civil rights of students, whether or not those officers are an employee of the school or of a local law enforcement agency. Betsy DeVos has talked about rescinding that guidance or revising it, and I'm interested to see how that conversation might affect the role of school police. Evie Blad covers student engagement for Education Week, and Holly Yedick directs Education Week's Research Center. They both joined us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. And that wraps up another episode for us. If there's a story you want to know more about, drop us a line with radio at ewa.org. The mission of the Education Writers Association is to strengthen the community of education journalists and improve the quality of education coverage. For more than 70 years, EWA has helped reporters get the story right. Have a great week, and thanks for listening.